Hi friends, my name is Tris, and this is No Boilerplate, focusing on fast, technical videos. Today I'm going to talk to you about building apps you can deploy anywhere with no installation by using Rust and WebAssembly. As ever, all Rust code you see in this video is part of a literate programming document that can be extracted and compiled with native Rust tooling. Rust runs everywhere. On servers and in containers, game engines running at native C speed, back-end web frameworks allowing safe, fast web development in the AWS cloud with first-class support from Amazon, and is the cheapest language to run on AWS Lambda, on Windows with first-class support from Microsoft, and natively in the browser with WebAssembly. WebAssembly gives you native performing apps with the ease of web distribution. For example, Wavacity is a port of the popular audio editor Audacity to WebAssembly. The author even ported the C++ interface library, WX Widgets, along with the app. When you deploy to WebAssembly, you get the mobile app for free. And with WebGL being standard in all modern browsers, you can run anything, including Doom, which of course runs on your phone too. But there's a snag with WebAssembly. Here are the languages from WebAssembly.org that have first-class support. Notice a problem. No Python, no Ruby, no Java, not even JavaScript. That's not to say that these languages aren't in the process of being ported to WebAssembly. With Mscripten, any C++ program can be ported, but these languages aren't a good fit for WebAssembly due to their heavyweight runtimes. This has hampered adoption. These WebAssembly languages are so drastically different from the popular high-level languages of the web. But I spot a language in there that I do like, and Rust was one of the earliest adopters of WebAssembly more than five years ago. Colin Eberhardt has run a small survey of WebAssembly usage for two years now, and in all metrics, Rust crushes the alternatives. This makes sense. Despite these other languages' popularity, they are not a good fit for a WebAssembly environment. Rust is an excellent language to write WebAssembly in. There's no unpredictable garbage collection pauses, no JIT compiler performance cliffs, just low-level control, coupled with high-level ergonomics. Small code size means faster page loads. Rust-generated WebAssembly doesn't include extra bloat, like a garbage collector. Advanced optimizations and tree shaking remove dead code. And Rust has a lively ecosystem of compatible libraries to help you hit the ground running with expressive, zero-cost abstractions and a welcoming community to help you learn. Let's have a look at Rust's take on WebAssembly. Here's the lowest level DOM manipulating WebAssembly code you can write in Rust. It's so low level, it's grabbing the window and document, then generating nodes and appending them to the DOM manually. But maybe you recognize this kind of code. Where have you seen this sort of thing before? It looks a lot like JavaScript, doesn't it? Only with no nulls, a rich type system, and an ecosystem that doesn't make you want to pull your hair out. This is, of course, not how we'd write browser code today, in JavaScript or in Rust. I'm just showing you the fundamentals. Just as you don't directly manipulate the DOM with JavaScript, we won't do so with vanilla Rust. Today, we're going to look at the most popular high-level front-end WebAssembly framework in Rust, which is called U, right after this word from this video sponsor, Quadratic. Quadratic are building an open-source spreadsheet for engineers and data scientists built in Rust, WebAssembly, and WebGL. This might be the coolest spreadsheet I've ever used, and I've used Emacs. You can choose your formula language, either simple Excel-style statements or SQL and Python, both standards in the field of data science. Because all data is evaluated in WebAssembly, Quadratic is fast. The UI is in WebGL with hardware acceleration in all modern browsers, allowing 60 FPS scrolling, complex graphics, and smooth pinch to zoom. This is a really exciting project that I'm delighted to say is hiring. Quadratic are looking for Rust developers, people with WebGL experience, even if that's only with JavaScript, people with Apache Arrow experience for processing Quadratic's high performance datasets, and senior engineers used to working at the pace of a startup. Check out and start the project on GitHub at github.com forward slash quadratic HQ and view their open jobs at careers.quadratic.2. My thanks to Quadratic for their support of this channel. Let's see what high-level WebAssembly looks like in U. U is a Rust framework for creating multi-threaded front-end web apps using WebAssembly. It is a component-based framework like React and Elm, though perhaps it is more correct to say that they're all functional programming-based, and React is simply the most well-known. Though WebAssembly is slower than JavaScript at time of recording, U is faster than React. I suspect that as WebAssembly is optimized in browsers more and more, we will see frameworks like U take the lead in performance. But it's already faster than React, so I say ship it. U is designed with WebAssembly's bi-directional JavaScript support in mind, allowing access to the NPM ecosystem, if you're into that. Let's see some code. No logic here, just a paragraph created in our DOM. This is the simplest component, but look at that HTML macro. Yes, that's actual HTML inside your Rust code. 
This isn't achieved by some kind of external preprocessor, like React requires with JSX. This is native Rust. At compile time, the HTML macro rewrites that HTML into a U data structure that builds valid HTML and interpolates the props for us. The U HTML macro even understands HTML tags and attributes and will give you syntax errors within Rust's normal compiler errors because they are normal Rust compiler errors. This means that whatever editor you are using, or just cargo build, you will get these HTML errors as normal for free. You don't have to configure IDE sublanguages or whatever. There's no mapping of source files to built files and the loss of context you get with preprocessors. As I've said before, it's Rust all the way down. We build a U app, like React, with a tree of components where state flows from trunk to leaf. Here is U's component trait, which you can think of as the interface of our components. Only the first two methods, create and view, are required. Create is called when the component is created. View defines the component's visual layout in HTML. Update is called when a new message is sent to the component. Changed is called when properties passed to the component change. Rendered is called after each time a component is rendered but before the browser updates the page. And destroy is called right before a component is unmounted. Here's how they come together for the classic demo of a click counter. Firstly, as ever, we define the valid states of our system. I'll pause here to point out that from this core model, you, the viewer, could probably infer the functionality of my app, couldn't you? The compiler certainly could. Let's move on. The only message we expect to send to our component is to increment the counter. We don't send this as a string or a number or some anonymous object. This is Rust. We do things properly. The message enum has only one variant, add one. If there were other valid messages that could be sent to this component, we could add them here, and even define payloads of these messages such as numbers or strings or any type. The compiler would then refuse to compile any of our code where we sent the wrong message or forgot to handle a message variant. Just imagine what that kind of certainty would be like in a 100,000 line code base. That'd be worth waiting a few seconds to compile, wouldn't it? I've built large React apps. I certainly think so. The model holds our state, which for this example is just the counter value, an extremely large integer. We then build our component, implementing the component trait for our model with the message and properties that all components are required to have. We then define the create method, where we set the initial state for our component. Remember that self here is the model struct, where we keep our component's state. Here is the update method, where we receive our message and add one to the counter, mutating our component state. And all of this is rendered by the view method in HTML, using the brilliant HTML macro again. We have created a button and wired the onclick event to send our valid message to our update method. Note that even inside the HTML macro, the Rust compiler keeps us safe. Our whole app is strongly typed and errors are beautiful. Now, building apps with WebAssembly is not without challenges. You will read about three in particular. As you can probably guess, WebGL is the missing piece of the puzzle here. Many Rust UI libraries work inside WebAssembly, allowing custom native interfaces running at 60 FPS. Subscribe for part two, where I demo this. WebAssembly has access to web workers, which you may know from JavaScript. This is difficult to integrate into most languages' runtimes, as the end developer, i.e. you and I, don't have access to the runtime. It's written in C or C++. You either use OS threads, not available in the browser, or your language's green threads or Go routines or whatever, or you're out of luck and have to wait for the language designers to implement web workers. Rust doesn't come with an async runtime, though we mostly use the crate Tokyo for this. And here we see the benefit of not building in an async runtime into the standard library. This means that excellent packages like my favorite here, Rayon, are backend agnostic, which means it's trivial to swap it out for one that supports web workers like we're doing here. WebAssembly not having a built-in garbage collector really harms porting efforts for other languages that expect one, meaning that the whole runtime of, say, Python must be ported into WebAssembly in order to run it in the browser. But with Rust, there's no GC, meaning it works trivially inside WebAssembly just as it does on every operating system, container, and on bare metal. If you know Rust, congratulations. You are now a front-end web developer, and you can easily write safe and fast web apps. In the top video, I used Rust to make a fun retro computer visualization for my Hope Punk podcast, Lost Terminal. If urban fantasy is more your bag, click the bottom video to listen to a strange and beautiful podcast I produce called Modem Prometheus. Transcripts and compile check markdown source code are available on GitHub, links in the description, and corrections are in the pinned errata comment. Thank you so much for watching. Talk to you on Discord.